Hello, welcome to the sketch note with me, Gavin Ashton. I'm security strategist with StealthBits, now part of Netrix. There's a lot of content out there focused on emerging threats or specific controls for new technologies, new ways of working and so on. Sometimes what it's useful to do is just to step back um, and understand stage in terms of where we are and, and how we got here. So today I'd like to do a little history lesson. So this is going to be a trip down memory lane for many, um, maybe useful summary for others of, of why we see the kinds of issues that we do. And then later on, We'll go through a little more detail in some of the specifics in future sketch notes, but for today, I hope this is enjoyable. Please feel free to engage with me through this video in the comments, or you can reach me at, at Twitter at my handle on the screen here, which is uh, Gavin Ashton without the vowels, it's a GVN, NSHTN. So where did this all start? I'll save you the story about computing prior to the immediate post war era and begin in the 70s and 80s when, when corporate IT was really taking off. So back then, the internet was really in its very early infancy. I'll draw it off to the edge over here. It's really a collection of military and, and some university and research-based stuff. But the internet, as we understand it, didn't really become established until the very late 80s and into the early 90s. And with a typical organization, as we'd understand, would be confined to what I call four walls. So you'd like to have a data center and you probably have an office block. Okay. And in there we'd have uh, things like you know storage media on the old tapes, which is my box with eyes. <laughs> um, possibly you know a terminal in here based upon some magnificent old machine with an amazing keyboard. Uh, you'll learn that I'm a bit of a keyboard freak. Um, and in the office board building, you'd, you'd have your sort of thick client terminals. So these are your, your what would become sort of IBM PC based things. So again proper big desk bound computers and a pipe or two in between. So in this in this model here, we're still looking at things like insider threats. So people with physical access, people stealing physical media, people with a technical wherewithal to get into the building and compromise those devices. Identity was, was very much based upon localized systems, so you had local accounts for things. So no sense of, you know, the sort of shared identity infrastructure as we take for granted today. So no real threat in terms of mobile access. We didn't really have mobile devices and systems at scale, at least as we do today. And that's really a picture of where we were sort of, say, in the 80s. And moving on to the 90s and, you know, the Internet, you know, still an early system, although going through to the mid 90s, that's when the Internet sort of really started to take off. So I'll draw a few other nodes on there. But from a corporate perspective, still fairly nebulous. In the 90s, again, if I draw our data centers here i'll now express this as sort of multiple boxes probably still managed by you know the organization that's running the systems and i'll draw a single office block here although you may have had you know a few more of these um so to begin with you know let's draw a few systems in here so we've got our sort of servers you know you may have some databases in here and then from a client perspective you know still looking at mostly sort of um, ibm pc desktop based systems and potentially some laptops as well. Now, these weren't laptops as we understand them today. So these are sort of fairly chunky, not that mobile uh, devices, and certainly not as connected as, as we assume today. So in these days, you know, you, they may have been somewhat mobile, although it, it would have been case of return to base if you wanted to sort of update data and so on. So you may have, have gone mobile, but you'd be coming back to base to sort of sync up. Maybe some very early signs of sort of VPN style access for a select few, but you know, nothing, nothing like hat scale. So, you know, and again, you know, in this case, you know, we've got our pipes. Um, you may have had an internet connection back at this stage, but it would, it would have been very restrictive. It'd be based upon sort of the firewalls. So although there's some degree of, you know, a small degree of mobility and some degree of connectivity, we're still really operating within those four walls. And it wasn't until uh, the introduction of Active Directory that we see something that we'd recognize today. So if I stay on that sort of picture there, uh, I'm going to draw in AD as my little sort of blue triangles. And that would be hosted through a number of domain controllers. Um, you know, it was, it was around this time that um, the mobility was slowly becoming more popular, although still very much in its infancy. So, you know, you might have had that laptop and the smartphone as we recognize it today still didn't exist, but the internet was becoming established. So, you know, you'd access that purely through a browser on that desktop PC, for example, or the laptop. But, you know, definitely not your car or your TV or your watch or whatever else. 
Um, and it was at this time we started to see the first big email born threats, so viruses and malware. So the cybersecurity world was beginning to recognize external threats. Um, but we're still much more focused at this point upon that perimeter in terms of a firewall blocking the outside world. And the principle of least privilege to protect from insider threats and physical access were much more sort of prevalent. If I move on, the iPhone was introduced in 2007. We're moving on towards sort of the 2010s now. So data centers wise, you know, we may have had our traditional data center. I'm just going to draw three. These are called, these are servers, by the way. <laughs> These blobs in these squares. Uh, we may have had, you know, a traditional data center, but it's probably more likely at this point that we would have been using managed services. So I'll draw these as sort of blue managed service boxes, you know, servers that either we or somebody else manage for us. Uh, we still have AD, and you know, perhaps we still, you know, we 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 would still have, you know, office buildings, uh, or perhaps we're operating out of, you know, partner sites. Possibly by the 2010s, you know, we're looking at far fewer all the sort of desktop PC systems at this point, although they're obviously still still out there. Much more in terms of mobile devices, and probably also by this point, you know, a few more cases of people who are sort of natively remote. So this is sort of people who live on the road and, and so forth, and only have to come back to base for certain new devices. But the iPhone had been introduced in 2007, so mobility was really starting to take off with that consumerization of IT. You know, people instantly start to use those internet-based services to share and store information. So at this point, it probably makes sense to sort of have a reference to the cloud in here. But in these days, you know, probably still on a more sort of consumer basis. But the fact that people were starting to share information and, you know, emailing and so forth, you know, we were starting to see data, data leakage. And also sort of the API-based economy was starting to take off with those internet-based communications really becoming more and more prevalent. So with these challenges, services were becoming more established to provide some level of management for devices across the internet. So we wanted to sort of get our hands around those devices. Although for most organizations, that was still sort of in addition to the existing and traditional methods of management through Active Directory joint machines. So fundamentally, we were still tied to that sort of four walls type of approach. If we wanted to access some application, you know, that's going to be through sort of federation from Active Directory from on-premises out to sort of specific applications or maybe sort of other partners across the internet. But as devices become more and more remote, you can start to see the cracks appear. So the service area of attack for the directory has basically exploded at this point. So, you know, with more and more of these devices connecting remotely and more and more form factors and, you know, operating systems, apps, services, and so on, users accessing all these things outside of our security boundary, you know, we suddenly become exposed to things like, you know, credential stuffing and password spray attacks. So, you know, at this point, AD still hasn't gone anywhere. It's still there. And AD, you know, even in the on-premises sort of environment, with no, you know, back a few decades or a decade or two, it still requires careful and consistent management to keep it secure, which you know, relatively few organizations truly get a handle on. So with an expanding surface area and gaps in AD management, this makes it all the more simple for attackers to achieve their goals. Later on in the decade, in the 2010s, we saw the introduction of true cloud-based identity services. So I'm going to move on at this point. You know, I'm going to draw my draw line down there so I can scoot on a bit longer. Uh, so I'm going to draw a nice big cloud up here. That's going to be my Azure AD box. AAD. I'm going to have a couple of data centers that we manage and somebody else manages. Servers at this point are going to be reduced to simple dots. I'm going to have my AD box there with the little triangles in it. And again, an office building, a partner building, and then pure remote devices and some mobile devices. At this point, I'm not going to bother drawing desktop PCs anymore because it's obvious what I'm talking about. Yeah, so the iPhone had been introduced in 2007 and we've, we've got mobility, we've got API economy. So in the cloud, there's just really sort of two sides to this. If I sort of spit that clean down the middle there, we've got traditional sort of IaaS type services. So infrastructure as a service. So this is where we have, let's call it a blue box. And in here we might have things like, you know, domain controllers and servers that are still joined to the directory. Okay, so that's really just another data center. We've also got cloud native services so whether that's databases or apps or you know what have you just storage we're starting to see that the attack services has sort of raised up to the sort of cloud level and we're seeing that whilst management of ad is is as relevant as it ever was 
there's also a whole slew of new stuff we've got to manage. But Azure AD at this time was generally only used to provide access to Office 365 and support management of Azure resources through IaaS and PaaS services. So with the 2020s, um, 2020s come on? Yes, 2020s. It sounds like the future to me still. Um, COVID has really accelerated adoption at a rate that nobody anticipated. And it feels like organizations finally get the benefits of moving to this cloud-first model. Having end-user devices managed purely through the cloud, for example, apps published through Azure AD or some other cloud-based identity services, means that we're no longer trying to tie users back to the on-premises infrastructure. Remember this sort of uh, surface area for AD, you know, is exploded. So it's coming from, you know, a few pages up where we had, you know, the four walls. All of a sudden, you know, you've got these sort of devices here and there's more and more classifications of how we manage devices, you know, corporate owned or personally owned or, you know, business managed or personally managed. Different places that our infrastructure can exist, you know, in either the managed services or, or cloud-based services. Ways that AD can be exposed to the cloud through things, you know, depending on how we synchronize identities and so on. But, you know, the cloud can also be an attack vector to come back to AD uh, these days. So the attack service has just exploded. So what we're really looking to do is, if I sort of scroll back a little bit here, is, okay, so what, what are we trying to do now? So we're in a state where, you know, Active Directory is still going to be, you know, it's not going to be going anywhere for as long as we've got those sort of legacy systems. And even, you know, organizations are still building up new applications and services into Active Directory. And attackers are already clued up to this, and they've already got, you know, a couple of high-profile attacks targeting cloud-based identity platforms. So as much as it's still important to address things like the principle of least privilege and good general management of Active Directory, we've also got this new set of challenges to face. So as the number of systems is increasing, so has the number of security solutions. You know, and if I draw these as kind of, you know, whiz-coloured boxes in here, you know, it doesn't, I'm not sort of really going to call any out in particular, but you know, let's just say that, you know, the number of things that, you know, and vectors and widgets and, you know, it's all complexity. So we're already seeing a trend of organizations looking to consolidate their security stacks. You know, people have become clued up to the fact that the more solutions we have out there, the higher our attack surface becomes. So I'm going to reduce those down a bit. And we're also seeing supply chain based attacks. So it's no longer a case of purely looking at the compliance of systems as they exist in production, but the whole end to end delivery process. You know, and this is where you get into the DevOps or DevSecOps subject. You know, we've also got new exciting developments in the identity space like passwordless technology and new features like verifiable credentials. So it's all very exciting. But fundamentally, from a perspective of back to directory and identity, you know, we're moving to a phase now where, you know, we've got the ability to say, right, OK, devices, you know, they don't necessarily need to be you know, tied to Active Directory anymore. You know, even hybrid management of devices, we're still reliant upon Active Directory and having, you know, builds and come back to base for getting a new device and so on. We can move away from all that. We can get devices out of AD. You know, even these these folks down here don't necessarily need to be in AD anymore. So we can remove that, all that attack surface from Active Directory. And we can also start to look at how we manage our identity flow between the cloud and on-premises to really minimize that exposure to Active Directory back and forth between the cloud. So things like Azure AD SSO, and passwordless technology, et cetera, we're starting to minimize that, that threat from um, identity. So once we've sort of made it simpler to manage Active Directory, we can start to then, you know, it makes it easier to then put those guardrails in to, to make Active Directory safer. We'll talk more about that a, a little later on. So that's my little whistle stop tour of the past few decades. Um, what I hope you got from this <laughs> was an understanding of how threats have evolved over time, how putting some baseline controls around legacy platforms can help safeguard those and enable us to focus more on delivering more tangible benefits, whether that's through you know, automation or cloud-based management of devices, getting apps authenticated through the cloud or, or whatever it is you're looking to achieve. And I'm gonna leave it there for today. So I hope you found this interesting and useful and I'll catch you again soon. Thank you.